Before moving forward with the next topic, let's see a question so that we get a feel of how to apply the um, equations of motion in gravitation. So we have been asked to calculate the velocity of object which is thrown upwards and it reaches to a maximum height of 10 meters. And also we have to correspondingly find out the time taken in this motion. So suppose this is the surface of the earth and this is the ball. Now this ball has been thrown upwards, let's say with some velocity u, which we have to find out. And it reaches a height of 10 meters. So this is my 10 meters. Now I'm considering the downward direction to be positive. So applying the equation v square minus u square equal to 2gh, I say v will be equal to 0 because at the highest point uh, the velocity of the ball will be 0 minus u square equals to 2 into the acceleration due to gravity is in the downward direction therefore it will be positive and it will be 10 into height will be negative minus 10 because we are measuring from the surface to the height of 10 meters and it is in the negative direction therefore u square is 200 which implies u is 2 root uh, 10 root 2 meters per second. Now, having found out the initial velocity, let's see how to calculate the time taken. For this, we will use the formula v minus u equals to gt. So, t is, this implies, t is v minus u upon g. Now, final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is minus 10 root 2. So why I have the used this negative sign? Because I have considered the downward direction to be positive and my u here is in the upward direction. Therefore, we have to use this negative sign upon 10, the acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to root 2 seconds. Now, we will see two uh, quantities, that is mass and weight. So mass is measure of inertia larger the mass larger is the inertia and inertia we have studied earlier is the tendency of an object to resist motion so mass remains constant no matter where the object is moon earth or anywhere else now weight is uh, the force with which the uh, an object is attracted towards the earth uh, weight of an object is given by mass times the acceleration due to gravity that is mg the value of g is constant at a given place, hence the weight of object is directly proportional to its mass. Now let's move on to the next topic, weight of an object on moon. If you have ever come across the video of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, you would have seen him jumping in the space quite easily. Now why this happened is to be answered. We have earlier seen that the weight uh, or the force with which an object is pulled toward a, towards earth is given by g m small m upon r square this is just near the surface of the earth and this small mass is mass of the object the capital mass is mass of the earth so i'll write here this earth and this is object in this case we have a man who is standing on the moon similarly if we are supposed to find out the force with which the man is attracted towards the moon we have to substitute the values of uh, mass and radius equal to that of moon so the force on moon will be g mass of moon mass of the person upon radius of moon square now if we substitute the values of these quantities and we found out uh, find out the ratio f moon upon f earth we see this ratio is equal to 1 upon 6 so the force with which the moon attracts the person is one sixth the force with which earth attracts the same person hence the weight of an object I will write here weight of an object is one sixth the weight uh, weight of an object 
on moon is one sixth the weight of the same object on earth. I'm using weight here because weight is equal to the force with which the earth or the moon attracts the object. Hence, I'm interchanging the force with weight here. Now, pressure. The force acting on an object perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. Pressure is defined as thrust upon area. Ah, here. Yeah. Pressure is thrust upon area. The SI unit of pressure is Pascal, which is also equal to Newton per meter square because thrust is nothing but force, which is Newton, and area is meter square. Now, let's see a question. A block of wood is kept on a tabletop. The mass of wooden block is 5 kg and its dimensions uh, is given here. We have to find the pressure that is exerted by the wooden block on the table if it is made to lie on the tabletop with the following dimensions. So we will see it pictorially. The first situation says that the object kept on the table, let's say this is our table, is uh, this dimension is 20 centimeters and this dimension let's say is 10 centimeters. Now, the force acting in the downward direction will be the weight. So uh, in the A case, the force here or the thrust is 5 into 10. That is 50 newtons. 10 is, I am taking G to be equal to 10 meters per second square. So the pressure exerted will be thrust F upon area, which is 50 upon 20 into 10 this will be centimeter square now if I convert this centimeter square into meter square I'll get 50 into 10 raised to the power of 4 upon 200 so this will be equal to 2500 newtons in the second part similarly we have been said that the dimensions of the block lying uh, is in the way such that this is 40 centimeter and this is 10 centimeter. It doesn't look like one but assume it to be 40 and 10 centimeter and it is kept on the table. Now the force here again will be equal to 5 into 10 that is 50 newtons. So the pressure will be force upon area which is 50 divided by 40 into 10 centimeter square. Now again I'll convert the centimeter square into meter square to get 50 into 10 raised to the power of 4 upon 400 pascals. So this will be equal to 12.5 into 100 pascal which is equal to 1250 pascal. Now we calculate the ratio that we obtained in the first uh, A part upon the ratio in the B part. The pressure in A upon pressure in B is, uh, we obtained the pressure here to be 2500 Pascal. So uh, this is 2500 Pascal upon 1250 Pascal. So this is twice. This is because the area in the second case is twice that in the first case. Hence, we say that pressure is inversely proportional to the area for a given a constant force acting on a body. So if we know that the force acting on the body is constant, we can say that pressure in two different situations will be inversely proportional to the area in contact with the surface of the two different uh, situations. Now let's move on to buoyancy. Whenever an object is immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upward force which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object which is known as the upthrust or the buoyant force. This was also the Archimedes principle. All objects experience a force of buoyancy when they are immersed in a fluid. As it depends on the weight of the fluid displaced by the object, 
The magnitude of this force, the point force, depends on the density of the fluid and volume of the object. So magnitude of point force is rho of uh, fluid, volume of the object into g. So rho v here is the mass of fluid displaced. Now density is mass upon volume. Now why does uh, the iron nail sink in water but a rubber cock doesn't? The density of an iron nail is more than the density of water. This means that the upthrust of water on the iron nail is less than the weight of the nail. Hence, it sinks. But in case of rubber cock, the density of water is more than the rubber cock. Hence, buoyant force is more than the gravitational force of the cock resulting in floating of the cork. This brings us to the last topic of this chapter, gravitation, the relative density. The relative density of a substance is the ratio of density uh, of its density to that of water. So relative density is density of substance divided by density of water. As this is a ratio, it has no unit. So we'll see a question and end the chapter on gravitation. Calculate the density of silver if its relative density is 10.8 given that the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So we know relative density is density of, I will denote it by a uh, symbol, density of substance upon density of water. So we have to find out the density of substance that is Ag. So we write rho Ag upon rho water, which is rho Ag divided by 1000. Now I know that relative density given in the question is 10.8. So this is 10.8 equal to rho Ag upon 1000. This implies 10.8 into 1000 equals to rho Ag, which implies rho Ag is 1, uh, 10, sorry, 108, 00 kg per meter cube. Hence we can see that the density of uh, silver is much more than that of water. With this, I end the chapter on gravitation. Thank you.